Today I'm building a veneer bag deployment and storage jig. I built this project about three years ago and decided not to publish the video. But quite a few people have asked questions about my veneer bag system, so I decided it was time to talk about it. So in this video I'm going to show you how I built this jig and talk a little bit about the equipment I use. I also have a set of plans available on my website if you want to build one. The jig can be easily modified to work with just about anything you want to roll up. To start out, I cut the sides roughly to size and started my layout. The first circle I drew is a little larger than the bag diameter when rolled up. The second circle is just to make it look good. To cut the straight portion of the jig, I used my table saw to cut right up to where it started to curve. Then I shut the saw down and waited for the blade to stop. This gave me a nice clean cut line to work from later on. Then I headed over to the band saw to cut out the curved portions. I was being lazy and didn't want to change out the blade to one that would cut a tighter curve, so I just hacked away at it like a savage. I sanded to the line at the spindle sander to clean up my circle, and while I was at it, I softened the sharp edges by rounding them all over. I'm going to use a wooden closet rod to wind up the bag, so I drilled a hole slightly larger than the diameter of the rod so it would spin easily. I ripped a few strips of plywood to act as the frame and cut them to length. I'm cutting a few mortises for floating tenons to help keep everything aligned while I assemble the jig. If you don't have a mortise cutter, you can use a dowel jig, router, or just skip this step. Then I did a test fit to be sure everything lined up. Here is where the floating tenons came in handy. They acted like a third hand to help hold everything together. Once I was happy with the fit, I countersunk and screwed together the jig. I rarely glue my shop jigs unless I need the extra strength. I always want the option to modify them as I go. After working with some jigs for a while, I often find areas that could use improvement. So it's much easier to modify a jig when I can just take a few screws out. I of course picked through the entire selection of closet rods at the big box store to find the straightest bent rod they had. Now I'm on to building the handle assembly and a few keeper rings to keep the closet rod from sliding out of the jig. I used a hole saw to burn with friction through the wood. I think I used this particular hole saw to drill through some asphalt shingles on a roof to run a vent through in a pass through model project. So it was nice and dull. Yeah, we're really smoking now, so we're about burned through. Once I got the keeper ring burned out, I used it as a template to trace out the shape for the swing arm portion of the handle. I cut it out at the bandsaw. Some more spindle sanding to clean it up. I drilled a hole in the swing arm to allow the closet rod to pass through and did the same thing on the keeper rings. I used my pocket hole step drill bit instead of a proper countersink bit to countersink for a screw to attach the handle. I made the hole a little wider than the screw so the handle would spin freely when in use. Now the last piece to make before assembly was the handle itself. I used a piece of scrap maple, made it round and turned a few finger grips in it just to get a little fancy. The 
Before assembly of the handle, I pre-drilled and countersunk through the edge of the plywood so I could add a set screw to attach the closet rod to the handle and the keeper rings. I screwed the handle in place, being sure it wasn't too tight that it wouldn't spin. I put the closet rod in place and added the set screw to attach the handle to the rod. Then on the other side, I left about an eighth inch gap between the side and the keeper ring and screwed it in place as well. That gap will help everything spin nicely. This should keep the rod from sliding out of the jig when in use. To attach the bag to the closet rod, I used duct tape and taped the crap out of it. It's been on there three years and still holding strong. My assembly table is 4 by 8 feet and the bag I bought is a heavy duty vinyl bag that is 5 feet wide and 9 feet long. So to be able to take full advantage of the size of the bag, I designed the jig so it would hang off the edge of the table and just be clamped in place when in use. This way I can unroll the whole bag and use the whole thing. When not in use, it gets stored out of the way on the top shelf. The vacuum pump I use is from veneersupplies.com. They're not a sponsor. And uh, the model I have, I don't believe that they sell anymore, but I bought the largest one that I could. And then I upgraded the pump assembly so I could run multiple bags at a time. I haven't done it yet, but it would be nice to set up smaller bags for multiple parts rather than rushing to get all the parts in the big bag. I also use a breather mesh inside the bag to help evacuate all the air out. With the combination of the mesh and the flatness of my assembly table, everything comes out really flat. Here are some additional videos where I've used the vacuum system if you want to see it in action. And as always, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my next video comes out. And most importantly, thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping making these videos possible.